literally can apply as that foster care in them. We love you, thank you very much, wherever you are. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy and I'm a UK adoptive mom of two young children, just trying to share as much of our journey in the process as possible and try to connect with you guys over here down below in the comments and over on my Instagram page. If you aren't subscribed already, hit that button down below or hit my face in the corner and the notification bell next to the subscribe button will make sure that you get notified every time I upload a new video on Mondays and Fridays. In today's video, I'm doing a highly requested video. You guys really like to know the storybooks that we use and read to our little ones on a daily basis within our daily life to spread awareness of adoption and to introduce the concept to them in a sensitive and enjoyable way. So we worked on a lot of recommendations from our social workers and our adoption agency based on the um, obviously years of experience and expertise that they have. We ordered a lot of those books from Amazon and then we have kind of branched out slowly to go off other people's recommendations. I'm not going to go through every single book that we've got today because that would be a very long video but I'm going to show you some of our favourites that we use on a daily basis now and then some there's a few that we don't use yet because it's not quite age appropriate for our kids but I do think that they're going to be really useful. Um, our children are both under the age of three so that's the kind of developmental level that we are aiming for at the moment with the storybooks that we use. So the first three books I'm going to talk about are in kind of a set you can order them together you can order them separately as well they're not by the same author and they are definitely for the kind of older age group potentially preschooler but definitely sort of reception four five six seven that kind of age group and what I really like about them is that they've got a kind of workbook feel to them that the kids can kind of work through them as well. I will insert some clips here of the kind of inside of the storybooks. They are really handy for older children and especially children who've got a lot of trauma to work through. Uh, Elfa and the Box of Memories talks about an elephant who carries around a huge box, a huge weight on their shoulders and doesn't really want to talk about it, doesn't want to share it with anybody and it becomes a little bit too much for them um, and so it just talks about working through your feelings and um, it's got a nice kind of message behind it. What I also really like about these books is that in the back of the book they all have a little workbook for the kids to use so it can be it can belong to them and then it's something that they can then relate to they can then think about how the story relates to them and their life and how they might want to work through those things um, with yourself or on their own Morris and the Bundle of Worries is very similar to um, Elva and the Box of Memories. It talks about bundling things up, not sharing them with your friends, keeping them buried and how that just kind of grows and becomes a little bit too much. And again, in the back, it's got another workbook that the kids can work through. They can make it their own and they can work through it with you guys or they can work through it on their own, depending on their age and the, you know, their comfort level. And then finally, in this set, there is the Teasel's Baby Bunny. This one is definitely something that you could use for younger children. So the story can sort of be broken up into different parts. It talks about animals who don't yet have a baby. They have a very happy home, but they would like a baby. And generally how they bring that baby home and then settle that baby in. Um, and again, there is a book in the back of this one. this book is literally for you as the adult to talk you through how you can use the book so it details how you might use it for adopted children or it details how you might use it for those children who aren't adopted and the conversations you might have and then it also breaks it into age ranges as well so we've used this with our two-year-old just to kind of introduce the concept and just read it as a general story um, and that is sufficient that is enough and then it also talks through how as they get older and they might then ask you questions about it how you might use that book so this one is a little bit more versatile for younger children as well um it's not quite as direct about adoption as some of the other stories that we've got one of the other stories that we have probably purchased the most recently is a mother for choco and we bought it in the board book style so that the kids could really really have a go through it and kind of be as rough with it as they wanted to be um, a mother for choco talks again about another animal um, an animal who doesn't have a mom and wants to find a mommy. They are quite sad about this and they are traveling through on their journey to find a mommy. You can hear the kids downstairs with daddy. Um, they are traveling through the woods and through 
their life to find a mummy but they think their mummy needs to look like them so this focuses a lot on um sort of identity and um more the aesthetic aspects of the fact that a mummy doesn't have to look like you they just have to be kind and have those kind of personality traits that you're looking for um and i like this one very easy to read to a one and a two year old the next book that we absolutely love and have read hundreds of times is by jamie lee curtis and it is tell me again about the night that i was born really like this story it's very american based and very sort of us adoption style in that the parents uh, decided they were going to have a baby they got the call when the birth mother goes into labor and they go into the hospital uh, they get on a plane they go to the hospital bring baby home all that kind of stuff um, but I do really think it's really nice again to talk about adoption and I think what's really important for me is that um, our little ones understand that adoption happens in many different ways and it doesn't always look like their story perhaps again so that they can kind of get to grips with the fact that adoption happens to a lot of people and it isn't just happened to them um love the illustrations in this book again i'll insert some clips of what the book looks on the inside i think it's just really nice it's a really big size so it's not exactly travel friendly I really like this book it's a long book but the again it's still quite easy to read to a two-year-old and then last but not least our absolute favorite dog-eared book is called yes i am adopted um, again we got this from amazon we got all of our books from amazon i will leave the links in the description box down below for any of the books that we have ordered um, and i also already leave links for the books that myself and my husband have read um, to educate ourselves on different topics of adoption and i think the next video that i do around books is going to cover the books that we read as adults as well but this book is our absolute favorite we read it all of the time it's really really easy read very simple language very short sentences and really easy to read to our one-year-old and our two-year-old um, our four-year-old niece absolutely loves it as well and i think this one is nice and simple in the sense that it is direct and to the point in a sensitive way so that we can also talk about it with our family as well it talks in the voice of the child which i really like which a lot of the books do um which some of the other books do as well but it talks in the voice of the child and the child is asking is telling their story so i'm special i am adopted this means i don't have the same nose as my daddy i don't have the same curly hair as my mummy um it relates to like superheroes who also might be adopted and have found their family on earth um and it just talks about different ways that we can be special the change that we made to this storybook was that the last page is very faith-based so it talks about my adoption being planned by god above And you can see there that we have just changed it from God to the world. So we say that my adoption was planned the world above. Again, that is entirely up to you guys. It might be that you are faith-based and therefore that is completely and entirely appropriate for you guys. Um, it might be that you just want to change the wording slightly. And I would definitely recommend that you do that with all of the storybooks. If there's something that you think could be worded slightly differently, then change it. And at the end of the day, you can explain that every story is slightly different. Therefore, it's got to suit you guys. So yes, I hope that was helpful. Um, I have done a post over on my Instagram page about the stories that we use. I think I did it for World Book Day and a lot of people were very kind and commented different books that they have used with their children as well. So head over to my Instagram page, check out that post if you want any more recommendations. And if you've got any recommendations, drop them in the comments down below um, because I'm always on the lookout for some new books. I've currently got four in my Amazon basket saved for later just to check that those are the ones I really want just to check some of the reviews and um, so we'll, we will be expanding our library as well soon but that's it for now guys i will speak to you again on monday or friday bye